Leo, this is your week ahead astrology forecast from Astrology Motivation by Born Without Boundaries. Every week in this these videos, we go over the major planetary aspects and transits and how they interact with your natal sun and which means how they impact your day-to-day -day life. So we're going to start real broad with the stuff that everybody should know about and then we will focus into those things especially Leos, all Leos need to be be, uh, be aware of um, and then I'll break it into the decans which is a group of 10 degrees and there's three of them in each zodiac sign because every zodiac sign has 30 degrees and it's um, you'll see you'll see that there are different impacts because of the difference in the angles everything in astrology is based on geometry and that 10 degree angle is basically all that astrologers give for the aspect or the angle between two planets and the relationship it creates to actually be created anything way under 10 degrees or way above uh, 10 degrees is just it's not the aspect anymore and it will impact it could be a totally different aspect and it will impact the natal sun completely differently so um we're going to go into that um if you have your natal chart, it is best because then you'll know exactly where your natal sun is located in Leo, but you don't need it to enjoy this reading because I will estimate the correlating birth dates um, that go along and that are primarily being affected by these things. But it is most accurate to get the exact location of your natal sun. And if you love astrology, getting your natal chart is the best place to start anyway. Like this is where, this is where every astrologer ever has begun. They get their own natal chart and it's free. You can go online anywhere, just search free natal chart. There's a lot of websites that do it. Um, you'll need your birth date, which you already have excuse me, your birth time and your birth location. And with that information, you can generate a free chart. So let's dive in, okay? What are the big things? Well, first, there's a full moon this week between the third and the, and the fourth. And I say that because in the United States, I live in the States, um, New York City, Eastern Standard Time, the full moon happens at 11.42 p.m., which is really good because it means all throughout the States, the full moon is going to be at its fullest at night when you can really see it and enjoy it. So, yes, we'll get that juicy full moon this, this time around, guys. But if you're in Europe, it's already the fourth by the time the moon is at its fullest. I think it's about at, at around 13 degrees Sagittarius because the sun is at 13 degrees Gemini. And remember, a full moon is a two-sided thing. It's not just where the moon is, it's where the sun is. That's what determines a full moon. When the moon is in direct opposition to the sun, that's a full moon. When the moon is conjunct to the sun, that's a new moon. So, now you know. <laughs> um, so, the full moon happens... Um, between the third and the fourth. It's in Sagittarius. I can tell you from a, from a moon perspective, moon in Sagittarius is very robust and fun and playful and curious and its emotional state really depends on its ability to explore. It's happiest when it gets to be curious and wandering and free and it's not necessarily the most emotion. It is stable as long as it's changing. Right? It's not necessarily um, that, that I want to stay in one place, but I want to keep going. I want to keep exploring. That's its constant, and it loves it there. Now, this full moon is trying to Chiron, I think, because Chiron is going to be at 18 degrees Aries, and it's, it's in that five degree kind of trine, five degree trine to, um, um, to the, the moon. Uh, what is it? Whatever I was talking about, between the moon and Chiron. So it's not five degrees apart. It's within a five degrees of it being a perfect trine, which is 120 degrees. So it's about 115 degrees or maybe 125. I can't, I can't remember which one. But ultimately, it is still forming a trine. And that is a very good thing because a trine to Chiron means healing. It means catharsis. It means emotional pain and stress. And maybe because it's in Sagittarius, being able to finally grow beyond your trauma. And that's a really beautiful position for this moon, a really beautiful gift for this moon to have. And for you guys, Leo, some of you are actually going to be trying to this moon because it is in Sagittarius. So we're going to talk about that. We have another guest coming into the zodiac sign of Leo, which is Venus. Venus transits from Cancer into Leo on the 5th. Besides, oh, also, this week is from June 2nd to the 8th, 2023. 
I post that in the thumbnail and in the title, so I just assume you guys know that already. But ultimately, I'm happy to tell you that again. So it's on the 5th that Venus transits into Leo. Now, that in and of itself isn't that, isn't that big of a deal. Yes, Venus is kind of a diva in Leo, and she can get very difficult and spendthrifty and a little bit shallow, but she's also very loyal and charismatic and friendly. Um, she's also very romantic in Leo, since Leo rules the fifth house, romance and stuff. So this could be a really wonderful and passionate time. But the other big aspect that's happening is when, when as Venus moves into Leo, she is opposite Pluto. And that is a shit show because she's also square to Jupiter. And that's an even bigger shit show. It's like blowing things up, taking things to the max, going to the extreme, overindulging, superindulging, eating too much, drinking too much, spending too much, um, and then toxicity, like purge from Pluto, like that sense of the extreme to the extreme, which makes things explode. So this could really be a very tumultuous period, especially for a group of you, which we'll get into. There's also a reminder that Jupiter is also still square to Pluto, which means everything and all changes and everything is being taken to the extreme there's always happy birthday Doug Danny this big dynamic um, this kind of relentlessness that's in the air um, this push forward even if you don't want to move forward um, but we also have Mercury conjunct Uranus and that happens on the fourth the perfect conjunction at 20 degrees Taurus but really all week long until the very end until like the seventh um, they are conjunct each other within five degrees of each other and this happened a couple of weeks ago maybe three or four weeks ago when um, Mercury was in retrograde it conjuncted Uranus then and now it's back because it's moving forward so it's Mercury direct what is this this is curious conversations strange thoughts coming into your head like having information that you didn't even realize you had or information coming in that kind of surprises you this could also be globally some sort of big tech announcement that's happening Happening. So it's surprising, playful, clever, and intelligent energy that loves to have that element of surprise because everything with Uranus does, but it will be delivered directly to you because Mercury is involved. Something may come out of your mouth or an offer may be made to you that really just shocks you, right? Um, I don't think it's bad news. I just think it's going to kind of kind of take you by storm. It could. So those are the major aspects and transits that are happening this week that we all should know about. What do we focus on that Leo should know about? The sun. We always, I always write it down. The sun. That's what we focus on. Leo always know. It's easy for Leos to know where the sun is because everybody talks about it. Oh, it's Gemini. So yes, it's Gemini season because the sun is in Leo. The seasons are really defined by the position of the sun versus the, the earth and stuff like that. So this is Gemini season. The sun is going to move between 12 and 17 degrees Gemini. So it's, it's the sun is in the second decan of Gemini. It's right in the mid Gemini. Um, um, like I said, it's going to be about 13, maybe 13 and a half degrees by the time that moon is directly opposite for the full moon. It is sextile to Chiron um, by the 4th, uh, by June 4th. Um, it is also in a long-term semi-square, not semi-square, um, says a square to Pluto, which can be frustrating with change um, um, right now. It's not long-term because the sun moves quickly, but this could be really frustrating, like change that you're pushed into. Um, and then for this week, there is also the semi-square to Venus. Once again, a stubbornness when it comes to money, relationships, value systems, um, butting heads a little bit or dealing with a sense of just just a little bit of just agitation um, so that's what the Sun is experiencing let's go into the decans so if your natal Sun is located between 0 and 9 degrees Leo you are Leo 1 this translates roughly in terms of birth dates um, for you July Leo's so if you're born between say the 22nd of July 23rd of July whenever Leo, Leo season started the year that you were born and say the 1st of August or say the 31st of July that's you guys that is <laughs> that is Leo one um, 
you're getting a lot of movement this week because of Mars and, and Venus. Venus by the fifth actually moves in. She'll be at zero degrees Leo. So she will by the fifth be conjunct your natal suns, especially if you're at the cancer cusp. She's gonna hit you hardest. It always does. Everybody at those cusps, it always hits the hardest. She's This is new energy for her. She's going to drop and she's square to Jupiter and opposite Pluto. This is a huge thud for you guys. So cuspers, 22nd, 23rd, big freaking changes and kind of dramatic movements when it comes to money, finances, value systems, who you're attracted to, attraction in general, relationships. It doesn't have to be bad. It's just going to be big especially for you guys but the rest of the week and into the following week venus is going to be conjunct your natal suns mars is conjunct your natal suns right up until like the seventh eighth when it when it goes um 11 degrees leo which means it's actually transiting out into the third decan of um the second decan of leo yeah the second decan of leo um so what does that mean <laughs> So those of you at the end of the first decan, say around the 9th or 10th, uh, I'm sorry, no, say around the, um, say the 1st or the, the 31st or the 1st of, um, of July, those of you, you guys are going to be really, really, really tightly conjunct to Mars. So this is a lot of vitality, energy, and kind of being stupid with your physical self. You're just going to have a lot of oomph and energy and really be vital and dynamic, almost to the point of maybe kind of going overboard. And it's you guys at the beginning of Leo season, the Cancer Leo cusp, that are going to get that thump from venus that is so affected now usually venus conjunct the sun is beautiful energy but she's being acted upon by both jupiter and pluto at the same time so this is not going to be your average venus conjunct the sun this is venus opposite pluto square jupiter conjunct your natal sun so major extremes major visibility major diva it could work out really well for you but understand it's gonna be dramatic um we have also your natal suns are square to Jupiter, which we've talked about, um, a Jupiter that's conjunct the north node. We also have your natal sun square to the south node. What does that mean? That you guys especially are at a turning point in your life. It's not bad, it's just life. It's like a chapter in your life is turning the page. There is a, the old stuff is ending and the new stuff is beginning and it's actually usually a really wonderful transition period in somebody's life. Um, like I said, that thud with Venus though, this will be a, kind of a dramatic energy that comes to you this week. Um, and I wouldn't, usually Sun conjunct Venus is a great time to like, I don't know, be seen and be beautiful and be extremely attractive and have a natural attractiveness and vitality to you, I would not go out and and that could have a major impact or effect on people, especially with that opposition from Pluto and square to Jupiter. So you could really use that to your advantage in some ways too. Just don't let it use you, which it can because those, those energies are very overpowering, just an FYI. Um, Leo twos. So Leo twos, it's your, so this is if your natal sun is between 10 and 19 degrees Leo, which usually correlates between like August 1st and August 10th around there, you would be Leo twos. Um, your natal suns are trying the full moon. And that's beautiful because it's already a cathartic releasing and liberating energy. And so it's going to bring a level of harmony and emotional happiness to your life, emotional freedom, emotional stability, being able to finally liberate and free yourself and purge the old toxins. Especially for you, this is going to be a very beautiful moon. Use it to manifest. It's a great opportunity to do so. Um, by the 8th, Mars is going to be conjunct your natal suns, especially if you're like, what is it? Um, 
um, especially if you're basically born around the first or second of August. If you're born at the very beginning of the second decan, this is this is going to be um, Mars by the eighth is going to is going to hit you because it's going to be at eleven degrees. Um, 11 degrees Leo so that's when the vitality comes that's when the physicality maybe even the horniness really starts so it's a it's 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 usually listen it's a good energy you just have to use it and use the vitality in the best ways um long term your natal suns if you're at the very very beginning no no hold on let me think about this for a second I think I wrote that down wrong yeah, I wrote that down wrong. Um, your natal suns are also sextile to the sun sun. So the sun is in the second decan of Gemini. Um, and you're trying to the moon. So all week long, you're going to be sextile to the sun in Gemini. This is extremely blessed energy. It's romantic. It's vital. You'll be seen a lot. You'll show up. People will want to listen to you. You'll have a natural sense of leadership. Sun try sun um, sun sextile the sun doors open for you without you even asking. So this is a real beautiful blessing. You will be seen. You will get noticed. You will get attention. So go after it for those things that are most important for you um it's also a very creative energy so you could be popping off with a really dynamic creative like inspiration and then we have a square to mercury so only at the very very end so say the 9th or 10th of august you guys are going to be square to mercury on the fourth when it's perfectly conjunct to Uranus so this could mean major tech issues major tech failures major communication breakdowns because a square to Mercury and opposition to Mercury is like its own little Mercury retrograde um, it'll just pose a lot of challenges but the fact that Uranus is in the mix too there's gonna be a lot of curveballs that end up hitting you in the head so just be very very um, watchful that day i would say between the third fourth and fifth be very very watchful around those days because that square will will solidify and really that's when you'll feel the major effects um now let's go to leo threes so leo threes your birthdays are definitely virgo cusps you your birthdays would be basically from the 11th through the 21st around there of of august um, long term square to I'm sorry your natal suns the location the degree would be 19 I mean sorry 20 to 29 degrees Leo um, your natal suns are in a long term square to Uranus so Mercury is conjuncting Uranus this week um, please take note of that understand it especially those of you born around the 11th or 12th I talked about it with those people born at the end of the second decan. It's really you guys. Since um, Uranus is sitting at 20 degrees Taurus, it's really those of you at 20 degrees Leo that's going to get that perfect thud from that square when Mercury hits conjuncts Uranus on the fourth. That day you could expect tech failures, tech issues, tech problems, your brain not being clear. I would not set any schedule any important interviews, discussions, um, proposals, anything for that day. There, it, if you have vital emails, get it sent before or after that time because it could be a shit show and something could get caught up. Just an FYI. Um, you have a long-term quincunx to uh, Neptune, which means kind of easily distracted essentially for the next couple of years easily distracted the best thing to do with this energy is find a creative outlet so that you have an outlet for that energy and you can relieve that distraction um also it's a lot easier to sell you tonic water as medicine you know to, it kind of was actually medicine but to to sell you on bullshit when you're under this impression so if something sounds too good to be true it is and also consult a friend just for the next couple of years because your mind isn't the clearest when there are those dissonant relationships with Neptune. You have an opposition to Saturn, kind of. It's a very loose opposition. It's within like seven degrees, kind of, sort of. So, um, yeah, we can still talk about it. This is a sense of grinding really feeling grinding never never feeling like you get to rest never feeling like anything is good enough you know always being really really hard on yourself 
understand that you're being hard on yourself. It doesn't even necessarily have to be coming from the outside. So it's a good time to at least get into a routine of self-care, gratitude, especially for what you've accomplished and remind yourself of that so you relieve that stress over the next year. And then I said, I also talked about that with you guys. Um, if you're at the very, very cusp of um, Leo 3, you would be quincunx Pluto because Leo 1s are in opposition to Pluto. So even you guys are getting some frustration when it comes to extremes or changes or being pushed to change through frustration. Um, that's long term. That's going to be there for a while. FYI. I love you guys so much and I hope you enjoy these videos every week. Please come back every week. Subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell so you know when I upload your favorite content. And then come on over to Born Without Bound tarot where I do your week ahead tarot card reading every single week I hope you enjoy that one too I love you guys and Leo I'll see you next week bye